Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning we have been talking about the great history of Hindi cinema. Of course, I am aware that I have not been able to cover uh, the entire uh, Indian cinema also. I would like to give you a panoramic view of Indian cinema and not just Hindi films, but that would be for our next course. So, we have been so far talking about uh, the great uh, films, the beginnings of cinema, uh, Hindi films. We have been talking about the great makers, uh, the influential films, the experiments done and the stars uh, during the 40s, 50s and 60s. We talked about Raj Kapoor's Avara, we talked about earlier also we talked about the cinema of a social conscience like such as Achut Kanya and Nichanagar. We also talked about a cinema of uh, opulence such as Mughal -e Azam and that is the place where we ended. Okay, so, great performances, opulent filmmaking, extravagant sets and uh, also uh, the focus was on uh, not just the directors, but also to a large extent on film stars also. So, this entire thing about move, being a movie stars, we have been talking about Hollywood as well and we talked about being a movie star in the studio system. So, in Hindi films we are still at that stage, we are still now uh, a star driven industry. So, uh, and this uh, the 40s, 50s and 60s were the time, the, uh, the, the period where there was a lot of attraction towards the stars and we have been talking about the grand triumvirate of Hindi films. Raj Kapoor, Dilip Kumar and Devanand. So, we have been um, introduced to them and their works already. There was uh, one filmmaker and uh, uh, another great actor, very distinct place right at the top of uh, in the history of Hindi films. The director is Bimal Roy and the actor is Balraj Sahani. Now, Balraj Sahani was a star actor. He was not just a movie star, he was not just a matinee idol. He was a very unconventional looking person and if you look up some of his stills and images, you will find that uh, he did not have that gla glamorous aura of the triumvirate of Hindi uh, actors, these superstars of Hindi films. But nevertheless, a very influential presence, one of the greatest actors that Hindi films had ever produced, ever seen. So, I will be talking about Bimal Roy and his cinema, um, which was saturated with the spirit of social conscience. So, first film of this period is Do Bigha Zameen, it is a 1953 film. Now, um, the history of the film, the back story is that Bimal Roy had seen uh, at one of the, uh, perhaps at the very first international film festival in Bombay, he had seen Vittorio de Sita's The Bicycle Thieves. We have been talking about this film quite often in this course, Vittorio de Sita's Bicycle Thieves. You may look it up, we have talked about it already in when we were talking about Italian Neorealism. Now, this is a, a very Darwinian film just like The Bicycle Thieves. Bimal Roy after watching this film was influenced, was impressed by the starkness of the film, the social reality, the grimness um, of uh, and the uh, of the everyday life of an average man and uh, the way the gritty realism was portrayed on screen. And we are talking about the 40s, the Italian cinema and then 
uh, Bimal Roy was inspired by this particular film and result was Do Bigha Zameen, translated it means two acres of land. Uh, it is a very Darwinian kind of a theme about uh, survival of the fittest. So, human beings push to the limits of endurance, quite like uh, Mehboob Khan's Mother India, but less melodramatic and less extravagant. The Bimal Roy was no Mehboob Khan, they were they belong to two different school, schools of filmmaking. So, uh, K. Asif's Mughal e Azam, uh, Mahbub Khan's Mother, Mother India, and Bimal Roy's Do Biga Zameen, and also the next two films that I am going to discuss made by Bimal Roy. So, all these films belong to almost the same period in uh, the history of Hindi films but so distinct, distinct in terms of production values, themes, treatment and performances. So, this is something that you need to pay attention to. Dobi Gazameen tells us the story of a poor farmer, a village farmer played by Balraj Sahani Shambhu, who fights against all odds to preserve his two acres of farmland from a grasping landla, landlord. Again is the mother India situation where it is a woman's fight and here it is an extremely poor fight you know, farmer fighting to uh, retain possession of his ancestral land. He migrates to Calcutta with his, with his family and works as a rickshaw puller. The, the family they live in extreme poor conditions and uh, find it extremely hard to make the ends meet there. But uh, um, one, on one hand you also find the extreme city urban and rural divide that I have been talking about. But city is harsh here and a man has to survive against all odds in order to just to survive, just to make the ends meet. So, this is not Shri Charsobis again, which is quite a glamorous take on the urban and rural divide. This film is extremely gritty as I have already told you in its portrayal of poverty and street life. In So, poverty, extreme poverty in village and extreme poverty in urban landscape also. So, the idea is that a poor man has to just gather all his wits in order to survive. It is not going to be uh, as uh, glamorous uh, de departure as it was for Raju in Sri Charsobis or even in Avara. Okay. So, uh, the, those two films also sh uh, showed poverty, but more glamorous in a more glamorous way and in a more romanticized way. Here we find poverty in it in all its grittiness, grimness. So, as I was telling you about uh, Bimal Roy was impressed by the Italian neorealistic kind of cinema and tried his best to configure that element in his film. Balra Sahani actually hired a rickshaw and learned the trade on the streets of Kolkata. The film is still extremely relevant because of its social ma message and it highlights and the way it highlights the plight of our villages which is quite relevant even today. Another great film by Bimal Roy is Bandini 1963 movie, it is set in the British India and it begins with uh, Nutan who played who is the Bandini that is uh, a woman prisoner. Sh uh, her name is Kalyani and um, she is outwardly extremely subdued, very quiet, but uh, there is a fury raging within her and Nutan beautifully captures all this. Now, the jail doctor Devin uh, played by Dharmendra is intrigued by and also attracted towards her. Meanwhile, Kalyani volunteers to take care of an uh, infectious infected patient. 
her uh, selflessness and also her physical charms. They win the attention of the prison doctor and uh, uh, even though Kalyani is uh, absolutely, she distances herself from Devin, but uh, he is uh, not at all put off and then she tells him her story that she has been serving a sentence for committing a willful murder. A flashback takes us into Kalyani's past to pre-independence India. Kalyani is a young village girl influenced by her principled father. Into the village and uh, her life, there comes a revolutionary Bikash as played by Ashok Kumar. Now, Kalyani is visited towards the visitor and to save Bikash's life from uh, the police officers, and she pretends to be his wife. Thus, she compromises herself and soon the entire village is gossiping about her. Bikash and uh, it looks like he seemingly jilts her and uh, does not return to the village. Kalyani is now shamed. She also feels guilty of letting her highly moralistic father down. At the same time, she has to bear the barbs of the villagers. Now, to escape the shame, in the middle of the night, she leaves her house for the city and takes up a job at a nursing home. Now, here another twist of fate. She uh, meets a sick uh, woman, an extremely sick and extremely irritable woman. She is neurotic, always yelling and screeching. And uh, she also takes great pleasure in uh, humiliating Kalyani. Now, so Kalyani serves her, but then soon realizes that uh, this lady is Bikash's wife. What happens next? Now, this is the story of the film. This is the plot and then how Kalyani um, very willingly murders Bikash's life because so many things come hurtling back at her. Okay, her father's death out of shame, her own guilt and uh, her anger at Bikash. And then this is the final straw. She is uh, she is supposed to take care of this woman who is Bikash's wife, but is always, but a, a most unsympathetic character. Okay. So, uh, in her state of mind, in her frame of mind, what is Kalyani supposed to do? And she murders this woman by poisoning her. She is uh, uh, put behind bath and uh, she admits her guilt. And then, uh, uh, it's a very psychologically uh, psychological and character driven film the end is remarkable i'm not going to tell you the ending but you watch the movie for the great performances for its cinematography especially during the scene when kalyani uh, commits the murder and she walks up the stairs to vikash's wife's room and watch the scene which is done in the interplay of lights and shadow Sujata, which is a 1959 film, again starring Suja Nutan in uh, the titular role as Sujata, directed by Bimal Roy, is about the caste system, where a high caste boy played by Sunil Dutt, he falls in love with a low caste girl, that is Nutan. Um, the film's social message is that we are all united by blood. And it is Sujata's rare blood group that saves the life of her foster mother. It helps revive the, uh, her foster mother. Now, the film's social me message uh, that all of us are equal, it is a blow towards uh, the outdated caste system and forces of untouchability in our society. So, it was a very influential film, it is still is, you must watch Sujata. Um, so, from cinema of uh, social message, now let us move on to a great entertainer starring Devanan, directed by Raj Khosla and this is Gurudath's CID, a 1956 movie, which is still remembered for is fantastic music by the great O.P. Nair. 
Now, uh, this is one film through which India finally got its own version of film noir. Devanand plays the title role of CID, uh, a police officer and Wahida Rahman, she is in, uh, introduced in this film and she is the farm fatal. The story revolves around the murder of a newspaper editor and the plot unfolds in a typical pulp fiction manner. So, um, I won't be telling you the story because um, it is more about style and music and charisma. So, watch the film and watch the opening sequence of CID. It will remind you of uh, the Hollywood pulp fiction and detective films of the 50s. I will move on to another film that is Jaak Raho, this 1956 film starring Raj Kapoor is very unusual in the sense, um, also in the sense that uh, it is a Raj Kapoor's uh, film alright. He plays a migrant from uh, rural to the city, but he is not your average tramp that all of us have learned to love so much. Here he is a nameless being who has migrated to the big city to find work. He is thirsting for water and enters a building in a posh locality and where we soon learn that the residents are not what they appear to be. So, it is in a way stripping the hypocrisies of a well to do society, the bourgeoisie, the middle class. All the residents of the building, they take him for a, th a thief and there is a manhunt uh, to capture a man who is all he wants is a glass of water. This is Raj Kapoor's most potent social commentary on class distinctions. The film was directed by Amit Maitra and Sambhu Mitra and threw light on the murkier and hypocritical aspects of society. Interestingly, the film won the Crystal Globe Grand Prix at the Karlovy Very International Film Festival in 1957. So, we are talking about a time now, those times when Indian cinema started making its presence felt at international festival circuits, also it started getting important and influential prizes. In the same vein, I would also like to talk about V Shantaram's Do Aankhe Bara Haath. Now, this is a 1957 film, the great V Shantaram uh, who made films in Hindi as well as Marathi. He was actor, director, producer and he plays here a jailer who tries to reform six hardened prisoners through his Gandhian philosophy. So, again we are talking about cinema with a social conscience. Shantaram viewed cinema as a medium or in a vehicle of social change and here he recounts a real life open jail experiment. The film had a humanitarian message that prisoners should be treated humanely and should be given a chance to reform themselves. The film shows how one jail warden allows his prisoners to utilize their skills for the betterment of society and to get integrated in the mainstream. So, a wonderful film, a, a film with a very strong social message, uh, hugely popular film for several reasons. V. Shantaram again is one of the pillars of Hindi cinema uh, and uh, here uh, I would like you to watch, he has made several films of course, you know, he was very prolific, but um, here I am showing you not a clip from Do Aankhe Bara Haath, but uh, from another of his great films that is uh, Janak Janak Payal Baje. It is a dance movie starring um, Sandhya and dance maestro Gopi Krishna. In 1946, Shantaram directed and played the lead role in Dr. Kotnis Ki Amar Kahani which had both Hindi and English versions. It was based on a true story of Dwarkanath Kotnis who led a medical team to China to attend to the sick and wounded people most of them victims of the China-Japan war. So, here is a clipping from uh, a wonderful clipping, a dance sequence 
from Janak Janak Payal Vaje, a 1955 film. Watch it and enjoy it. A great entertainer and uh, one of the greatest comedies of this time is the 1958 Chalti Ka Naam Gadi, starring the three Ganguly brothers Ashok Kumar, Kishore Kumar and Anup Kumar, who were often considered as India's answer to Hollywood's Marx brothers. Chalti Ka Naam Gadi is one of the most delightful and funniest films of Hindi cinema. The three brothers run a garage, in, even in the movie they play brothers, they run a garage and own a jalopy, you know, old dilapidated car. Um, Bridge Mohan, that is Ashok Kumar, is a former boxer. He has been jilted uh, by the woman he once loved. So now he has turned into a misogynist and he protects his, father, uh, his brothers from women. Now, on the other hand, Kishore Kumar is a smart Alec Romeo and uh, uh, he has the beautiful Madhubala as his love interest. Watch this sequence from Chalti Ka Naam Gadi. Another milestone film of this period is Ganga Jamna. Nitin Bose directed this 1961 film and this is a high intensity decoit drama starring Vijanti Mala, Dilip Kumar and Dilip Kumar's real life brother Nasir Khan. The film is remembered for the Bhojpuri dialect that Dilip Kumar uses which was something very uncommon in his oeuvre. This was one of the um, earliest films that tried this kind of a dialect. Okay, and now we find it very common in Hindi films and uh, um, later on Amitabh Bachchan and also Govinda. Uh, they perfected this dialect, but Dilip Kumar was the first to use it um, to a great degree of success. The film also set the template for the good versus rebellious brother theme that was later seen in films such as Divar. Uh, another strong point of the film is uh, Vijanti Mala's performance and also music by Noshad where he made use of folk tunes. Watch this clipping from Ganga Jamuna. Another great film and this also is a standout film. Uh, I am talking about Hakikat, a 1964 film directed by Chetan Anand. This is a war epic set in the, uh, in the Indochina conflict of 1962. This is a dramatic representation of a very gruesome war and its effect on an average soldier. We find Indian soldiers helpless and very poorly equipped in the freezing terrains of Ladakh. The film starred Balra Sahani, Dharmendra and Jayant. This is one of the finest and most authentic war films from India. Watch a scene from Hakikat. Another major film of this period is uh, Guide, a 1965 film directed by Vijay Anand and based on R. K. Narayan's novel of the same name. Now, this novel fascinated the American author Pearl S. Buck, who wanted to make a film based on it. It was made as a bilingual, where the English version was directed by Ted Danieliski. Guide broke several ta taboos. It is a story of a, an adulterous heroine and an exploitative hero. Rosie, that is Wahida Rahman, she had a daring role as an ambitious dancer who leaves her domineering and impotent husband for her lover Raju. He is a tourist guide played by Devanand. When she is disillusioned by the guide, Rosie turns her back at him and treats him with contempt. When Rosie distances herself when he forges her signature, Raju is jailed and is filled with remorse and self-disgust. Once released from the prison, he uh, does not return to Rosie, but 
rather leads a simple life of penance in a village. Soon he is mistaken for a swami by the innocent villagers. Raju uses this case of mistaken identity for self redemption. Guide is remarkable for its music and dances. Uh, uh, of course, per, uh, acting is also first rate. Um, I would also like to draw your attention to the depiction of morally ambiguous characters in, that, in Guide. You see, the point is that both the hero and the heroine, they are flawed characters. They are not the kinds of hero and heroines that Hindi film audience were used to. So, therefore, in many ways, Guide broke the way women were represented on screen and men and the entire constructs of masculinity. So, this is an interesting area to explore through Guide. From Guide, we move on to another film of 1965. Now, Vakth, directed by Yash Chopra, is Bollywood's first multi starer, a very colorful film and uses the lost and found formula to the hilt. You may recall when I spoke about Kismat starring Ashok Kumar, I told you that was the film that set the template for lost and found formula and Vakt was one of the major films that exploited the formula. It is also remembered for its excesses and glamour. This is interesting as it uh, sort of heralds the beginning of end of the socialist model of simplicity and austerity on a screen. You know we are talking about the Gandhi Nehruvian socialist model that was set on screen for a very long time, but worked was a glamorous product through and through. It had dapper heroes, fast cars, palatial mansions and extremely glamorous heroines. So, glamour drips at every corner in Vakth. Vakth is also remarkable for its uh, larger than life persona of the great Rajkumar. Watch this particular sequence from Vakth with Rajkumar. The late 60s and the early 70s was also the period which saw the peak of uh, superstardom of Rajesh Khanna. Um, Rajesh Khanna, who uh, was hailed as a superstar with Aradhana, Shakti Samant, the director, uh, and he was at the pinnacle of his glory by the time we come to Amar Prem. 1972. Again, this film uh, is directed by Shakti Samant and is a woman centric film with Sharmila Tagore in the role of a courtesan Pushpa. Uh, Anand Babu that is played by Rajesh Khanna is her patron and Pushpa um, is a social outcast because of her profession also the fact that she has been uh, uh, abandoned by her husband, she cannot bear children. So, all those things are implicit in the, they are foregrounded in the film. So, her poverty, her lack of social uh, status, her inability to bear children, her inability to find love and to retain. So, now she, this is a point where she starts getting attached to a little boy Nandu, um, who is a neighborhood kid. Nandu is ill treated by his stepmother. Pushpa finds satisfaction in the love of the child and the child addresses her as mother. Now, since uh, because of her social position, she is denied the love of both Nandu and Anand. However, many years later Nandu returns and takes her to his home since she is the only mother he had ever known. Rajesh Khanna's lines such as Pushpa I hate tears remain famous till date. The film was a commentary on the decadence of contemporary society and also on position of women in our society. The film is also remarkable 
for his excellent music by R. D. Berman. I have been talking about the history of Hindi films and uh, no uh, such lecture can be completed without the mention of Shammi Kapoor. So, um, Shammi Kapoor's position is extremely unique in uh, the history of Hindi cinema. He brought into focus uh, the extremely flamboyant kind of an actor, a star hero. See, um, when you talk about great acting, you think of Dilip Kumar, you also think of Amitabh Bachchan, you think of Ashok Kumar and Motilal and Balra Sahani. Shami Kapoor is an out and out star. He was also known as the rebellious star. Um, rebel because most of his films are like rebelling against the established um, conventions, okay, uh, not in the Amitabh Bachchan way. Okay, so, he was not um, making a protest against the uh, social issues, but it was the way romance was handled on screen. He was also quite uh, um, irreverent, you know he had an irreverent look at uh, the people around him and society around him. Also, um, he is known as a rebellious star because in a way, he rebelled against the triumvirate of Dilip Kumar, Devanand and Raj Kapoor. So, he came at a point when these actors were the established uh, three, the great three, they were aging and uh, uh, cinema was also getting more and more influenced by Hollywood. Shami Kapoor modeled himself after Elvis Presley, the singing, dancing an extremely charismatic hero of his times. So, a great leading man, he was known and he is remembered for the great music and dances, songs and dance uh, sequences of his films. He has made a number of entertainers. You can watch Bluff Master, Jungli and also the excellent Tisri Manzil which was directed by Vijay Anand and produced by Nasser Hussain and he teamed up beautifully with actresses such as Sharmila Tagore and Asha Parikh. So, one of the greatest leading men of Hindi films, Shami Kapoor. And then I talk about the greatest superstar of Hindi cinema that is Amitabh Bachchan and his Zanjeer. Zanjeer is a 1973 film penned by Salim Javed, directed by Prakash Mehra. And this film gives us Hindi cinema's first angry young man. Amitabh Bachchan plays a cop seeking revenge for the brutal murder of his parents. With this film, Amitabh Bachchan set the trend for the revenge based action hero who could resort to extreme violence. Before that, Hindi film or Hindi cinema had not seen such kind of violence portrayed on screen. Interestingly, uh, Zanjeev's role was rejected by stars such as Dilip Kumar, Devanand, Dharmendra and also Raj Kumar. They found it too gloomy, too dull um, and they could not see themselves as romantic heroes in this particular role. But this is the film that made Amitabh Bachchan uh, the greatest superstar of all time. Here is a remarkable scene from Zanjeev. Other great films of this period uh, remain uh, Shole, Amar Akbar Anthony, Dawn, Mukadda Ka Sikanda, many of which star Amitabh Bachchan. This was also a period when uh, the screen pair of Dharmendra and Hema Malini had reached great heights and it was also a period when uh, Jitendra made a uh, lot of ways on screen, particularly Earlier, uh, with his pairings with uh, actresses such as Rashri and Babita and Mumtaz, and later on with Rekha and Sri Devi and Jayaprada. So, I am talking about the 70s and 80s. The 70s is also remarkable and remembered today for a strong cinematic movement in the form of parallel cinema that also emerged during this period. 
we will be discussing parallel cinema from India in our subsequent classes. Thank you very much.